So for about four years now, I've been keeping a film diary exclusively on Letterboxd. But about a year ago, I started using Notion to log the majority of my stuff. When I started doing this, all the film diary templates that I looked at were just very basic and didn't quite suit my needs. So I started building my own one and it's now gotten <laughs> ridiculously complicated. This is my main homepage for films. If you don't know anything about Notion, I'll explain everything from the beginning, but basically I'm just gonna show it around first and then I'll go into how you actually build something like this. I have basically, this is the actual film diary over here. So as you can see, I've got, we'll ignore that number for now. And then the actual film, the date, whether it's a rewatch or not. And then I've got some tags here. The biggest difference between this and most of the film database you'll see online is that I've got a separate film diary and films database. I'm gonna go into that. Over here on the right, I have some film sets up here, which have the years. So a certain amount of films, you know, I've got a lot of 2020 films I wanna catch up on. So I have them in their own list there. And then I've got all my different services. Then down here, I have a little new release tab. And then this is something I just started doing as you can see, these are individual films from different services. And then, so if I were to click on this link here, it would then open up that actual page. And then over here on the right, I have, which is sort of the main thing that takes a long time, is my film sets. So here I have this little preview window where you can see I've got a little progress bars for each one of how many films are left to watch. Um, and you can have a bunch of different views on this. So the main thing I use this for is for directors. So here I've got a list of all the directors whose filmographies I've completed and um, I have the amount of films that are rolled up to it and the finish date. So the main thing here is if I click on any of these directors and bring their page up, I'll get a list of all their films. And this is all directly related to the film diary. So I'll just show you this. If I go into this year and then let's say Elaine May's films here, I've got three left to watch there. So if we click on that, we can see I've only seen Mikey and Nikki. So I'm gonna bring this up here, do new, 1555, and then say, today I watch The Heartbreak Kid. There it is, The Heartbreak Kid. Then I watch it today. And then we'll say I watch my MacBook. So that's there. And then you can see Elaine May has now changed to two left to watch. And if we click on that, you'll see this Heartbreak Kid got updated. So that to me is the big advantage of doing anything in Notion is you can always link back to the same film. So you can have so many different things linked back to it. I also have series, which is all like film franchises and stuff. And it's the exact same thing here where if I click on any of these, like the Crocodile Dundee films, <laughs> I've seen all three of them. The main ones I would do would be directors, series, Festivals, I have a few festivals there. Um, and then watch lists are just like random little collections that I have. Um, lists is something different, I'll show that. And then services in the year are the two that I have up here. So now I'm gonna just show off a few more features here. So in here are new releases, I have most watched, which this is one of the advantages of having that, of having those two databases I talked about. Um, as you can see, I can sort by the films that I've seen the most. So I've seen Red Hot American Summer six times. This is from when I started logging. So this is from January 1st, 2017. So then the actual film diary. The other thing, the advantage here to me is that this is private. So I can have my own private notes on a film. So if I did watch Heartbreak Kid, click on it and I'd open it up. Then it brings up this page, which is the page for this film. Then I click on fill them here and it'll bring up my template. So this is just, and the great thing here is you can totally customize what you want to show up there, what heading. So I have, that was like the opening, the closing shot, and then like a little description of what it's about. And then I'll just write little bits about the film and um, stand out to be anything I really liked. And then I always try to read something about a film if there has been stuff written about it and I'll link back to that there. And the other thing I can do is if there's a quote I really like, I am the Heartbreak Kid. Um, I don't actually know anybody who's in the Heartbreak Kid. Let me, um, Charles Grodin as, as Lenny Cantrell. So 
so Lenny, and then I can give that a tag if I want to say that's an inspirational quote. Um, and then all those quotes that are linked to films, I can then click on film quotes here and I get a little selection of all my different quotes. That's just something I recently added in. Very similar to, you might've seen the screenshot database works the same way of on each page, I can add a screenshot and then it shows up here on this page. So it's just, it's all about linking the same information, but looking at it in different places in different ways. These photos are actually automated to degree. So if I go on to movie and this film here, cute girl. So if I go up to this extension here, which is called save to notion, um, I think I tried this out before. So we've got films and then I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to change the name, 1980. And then that date is the film today, save to notion. Um, it should save. And then it showed up here. Cute girl, it's got the picture. It's got 30 days to watch there because I have a special formula for movie films to always show me how long they're available on the service. And um, and if I'm here and I wanna watch that film, I can just click on this and it'll instantly bring up that link. This extension works similarly for most streaming sites or even websites like IMDb and Letterboxd, but it sadly doesn't automatically create an image for Netflix links, but otherwise it works the same. I just sort of recently discovered that. So I'm probably gonna be making a lot of use of that in the future. That is, and then it's also been added up here to movie, as you can see. So now that I've done all that, I think I'm gonna show how to actually build this database. I'm gonna have a template of this that's just in the description if you wanna just have a look and play around with it if you're already familiar with Notion. But if you don't know anything, it might be worthwhile to actually see how it's built. <laughs> So we're gonna make a new page called Films. Tut. So I click here, slash table, and it's gonna bring me up a table, inline table. I'm gonna call this Film Diary. Um, and we're gonna keep, it's automatically given us a name and tags property. We're gonna add in a date property and um, call that date. Leave that there. And we're also gonna add in a checkbox called rewatch. So that's we're gonna mark if something is a rewatch. So this is actually a really basic film diary sort of done. I'm gonna make this full width to get rid of that bar. Um, so if we did watch a film, The Heartbreak Kid, Kid, date was today, and tags, comedy, or something, or Netflix, whichever it is. That is our very basic film diary done. Problem with this, and this type of diary is actually exactly what I use for, you know, this is exactly what I use for my short films diary. So it's just the name of the film. It always had the year, date watched and tags. Um, and that's grand for short films I find. Um, my books, databases like this, but the problem with this type of database is if I add in, let's say the next day I watch big, um, which is, I don't know what your big is from, next day. And then the day after that, I love the Heartbreak Kids so much, I decide to watch it again. So the problem with this is there's no link between this title and this title. So they're two separate pages right now, which I don't like because that means if you want to connect, it means films start to have multiple pages. So if we're connecting stuff, it can get a little bit complicated. Um, and if you want to keep track of how many times you've watched a film, it gets complicated and try and do that. So what I prefer to do is to create another table database this one's just going to be called films. Then in this, we're going to make a database called the Heartbreak Kid and big. All right, do a relation here for a number that I'm going to call year. And then once again, don't think these years are right. Um, 1980. 
So then we're going to go up here, we're going to insert right. Now we're going to create what's called a relation. So that means it's looking for another database. And the database we're going to send it to is not that film, because that's my films, films to, yeah, create relation. So now, film one, and here we're going to call this number. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the heartbreak kid here and big there and the heartbreak kid here. And the other thing we're going to do is this is what I was talking about earlier. So we're going to clear those names. So now we can do a little bit more complicated stuff. So now in this database, we're linking to down here and then these two are linking back up to these. They're called untitled because I have taken away their names. What we can do is we can create what's called a rollup. And then we can create a rollup related to film diary. And then we're going to call this date. Calculate your original. So as you can see now it's showing us, oh, the heartbreak kid. I watched that on March 6th and March 8th. I can rename this dates watched. And then I can hide this. And now we got, oh, I've seen that film on those two days. And similarly up here, I can now get rid of this year database. And I can change it to be a roll up name of film year show original. And now the year is automatically going to show up if you've already given it a year. So what this means now is every film now only has one page. So Heartbreak Crit, this is where all that information goes. So we don't really need a name for these pages because we're not actually interested in these pages. We're only interested in these cells. So if you want, you can just leave this first thing just totally blank. And um, what I do is I've given it a number. So I've gone back to the first film I have logged, hold on. So this is back in my film diary. If I go here and I go all and then sort by earliest ascending. So as you can see, I have my first film Aliens, which is the first film I ever logged on January 1st, 2017. That's number one, number two, number three. And then I've kept that up all the way to the last film I watched, 1554. Um, so that's one way you can do it. You can use that um, little thing. But yeah, there's a different stuff you can do there. Um, so if you're interested in doing ratings, which I don't have in my system, but there's a pretty good way to do that here. So four and a half. And this is a tree. And then when I rewatch the Heartbreak Kid, I'm like, no, actually, you know what? That's a five, that's five stars. I'm gonna rename that rating. Um, so this is my rating of each of the films. So I probably have that like here at 4.535. And then I go down here and go roll up, go rating, and then film diary, rating, show, and then I'm gonna go show unique values. So what that'll mean is, let's say both times you rated it five stars, then it's just gonna always show five. But if one time you rated a 4.5 and the other time you rated a 5, now you can see all your different ratings for that film. So we've done that. So now we have one more table we want to create, which is our film sets. So this is what I was doing earlier with my directors and my stuff. So let's say Elaine May. Um, what's another Elaine May film? So now we've got four films here, which are all part of the same set if we're creating an Elaine May set. So we're going to make another relation, but this time we're going to relate to film sets. I'm going to call this lists. Actually, yeah, lists is what I now call these typically film lists. So now what we can do is in here in films, I can click on here and I can click Elaine May. And if I can just copy this, and then paste it over the other tree. So now if we go down here, we can make one of our roll-ups again. This time we're gonna say relate to film and then just names and we're gonna go calculate, we're gonna say count all. So now it's gonna say 
the total amount of films that Elaine May has directed is four. And I can hide this because we don't want to see that. And then we can delete tags. So now with this, we can do a lot. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to tell whether or not we've seen a film. Because now we're starting to add films to our film database that we haven't actually seen. So I'm going to make a new column called watched. This column is going to be a formula. So formulas in Notion are really complicated. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with them. And we're going to do a really easy one here. So one of the things with this is if you have true here, it'll just create a checkbox. And similarly, as you can imagine, if you have false, it'll create a checkbox, a empty checkbox. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to say, if there's no, if it's never been logged, so I'm going to turn back on this property here, fill in diary. If there's nothing here, then it's unwatched. And if there's something there, then it is watched. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, if, if related to film diary, if empty related to film diary. So it's saying, if this is empty, then we want you to say false as it is there. And then in any other case, we want you to say true. So if you're ever getting stuck on these, there's a guide here and it'll show you in if, as you can see there, it's showing you how to use that formula. Um, yeah, it's worked there for us. So as you can see now, the two films that we've logged, the Heartbreak Kid and Big about mock watched, bring it over, and the other three are unwatched. So what we can do now down here is we can go roll up. We can say watched. Now we're going to once again go to films. This time we're going to go to that watched one. We're going to say just checked. And it's going to give us the number, the amount of these films that are related to Elaine May that are checked. So I've seen one of Elaine May's films. So now we can build all sorts of stuff with that. Um, we can create a new formula here. That's just going to be total uh, minus watched. And so then we can say, we can call this left to watch. Now, if you want to make this a little bit nicer, we can put a little thing saying format at the beginning, and that's going to turn this into text. And then we can add plus, and we're going to put in the text to watch, and a space at the start of that. And now, as you can see, it'll just say Elaine May, tree left to watch, which I really like. I like that view. Now what we can also do is, let's say there's a director we've seen every film of, so I'm going to pretend that Penny Marshall has directed one film. That film's going to be big. <laughs> and Penny Marshall. So now we have zero to watch because we've seen that one film. Um, but we don't want it to say zero to watch. So we can do another if statement. This is where this is getting a little more complicated. Um, I'm going to have a copy of this template in the description so you can open that up and have a look at the specific formulas if you want to have a look through them um, but it's going to be if total right so we're going to say if total equals watched then say finished or complete or whatever you want to put there finished and then else do that statement we told it to do before I'm going to give it a bracket at the end. And there we go. Now it says tree to watched or finished. So there we go. Um, that's sort of how you would build that sort of thing. The one other thing I want to go through is how to import all your information from Letterboxd into Notion. So basically I'm going to go into Letterboxd here and then profile, edit profile, import and export. And then it's going to give us this option here to export our data. And so we hit that, it's going to give us a big file. And then over here, we're going to go import. 
and then you're going to click CSV because the letterbox is going to give you CSVs of everything. So go to wherever you have that saved um, and you're going to get something looking like this. So the two that we really want to look at here is diary and watched. So diary is going to be our film diary and then watched is going to be that films database I was showing before. So I'm going to import both of these. It's going to take a while because they're both very big. So it's given us two here. It's given us diary and watch. I'm going to bring these both over to our film top page so we can have a look at them. So let's look at our diary first. So it's given us a date here. We don't need that one. We can delete that. Um, year, we don't want for this, but we'll keep it actually just in case. Letterbox URL, we do not need. Um, rating, if you want to keep your ratings, of course, you're going to want that. I'm not going to use it for this because I don't have any there. Rewatch, we can keep. And tags, if you just want to hit tags here and change this to a multi-select, it'll instantly format all your tags. If you want to color one of these, you can just click on it and just set it to red for Netflix. And then that one's going to be red. And then watch date is actually really what we want. So now we've got all these. And then we're going to go back to film tuts and into watched. And date is totally useless here. And so is that we just want film and year is all the information we're going to have at the beginning here. So I'm going to actually going to make a new page called Letterboxd Import. I'm bringing them both. I'm just bringing them both onto that page. Turn into inline. And then up here, properties and show 10 pages because it's way too big. And the same thing with this one. So now in our diary, we want to make an insert right and a relation. So I'm going to just relate that to watched, create relation, and then I'm going to call that film. So if you're doing this, you probably need to do this first and set up your two databases with your letterbox ones rather than creating a system and then bringing your letterbox information into it. That's just going to be a bit too complicated. So now what we need to do here is we need to connect each of these to our film. So aliens needs to connect to aliens. So now that link is linking to this one here. And if you've got a really big database, that's going to take a lot of time. So what I did originally is I created, I used an automator, which just would go down, left, copy, right, enter, paste, down, select, escape. And then it would start that process again, down, left, copy, paste. And then I just let that loop run a bunch of times. I think it took a few hours for it to go through the entire list because it had to wait for it to load each time. Um, but it did eventually get through them all and it was a real pain. <laughs> there's, I don't know if there's an easier way, but that's the only way I could think. And then once I did that, then you can just create a formula then to copy and paste over your name if you wanted to list about a big number or something. Oh, and then the one other thing is, if you've got a film, actually I'm going to show this in my other one. So let's say you've got a film that you've seen, but you don't know the date that you've seen it on, but you just want to say, oh, I've just watched this, but I watched it before I've started logging. So a film that you previously saw, basically. So I don't know why I'm going to Madagascar, but I'm going to Madagascar. <laughs> you do insert right, what year is Madagascar? 2000, 2000, was it after Shrek 2, 2005? Maybe um, you go here, we're going to go check box and we're going to call this, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it pre log. So it's a film from before we started logging films, but we still want that tick there, right? So we're going to tick it here and then in here, we're going to say if pre log equals equals true. So we're saying if prelog is ticked, then say true. Else go to that system that we already told you to go through. And there we go. And so now if something is ticked on prelog, it'll be ticked on watched too. So you're gonna to want to do that for anything that's in your watched on Letterboxd. 
that you don't have a diary entry for. I think that's everything. So obviously, if you are interested in starting a film diary in Notion, there's a lot of options. You can bring in a film diary from Letterboxd or from a spreadsheet um, and bring that in and then work from there. You could just start fresh and just say, I'm just going to log the films I watch now. But yeah, I do. I think using Letterboxd as well as Notion is a really nice mix of having somewhere where you have your own control while also having a relatively public space. The stuff I didn't show in this video are pictures and progress bars and all that stuff, but that's all in the template, so you should be able to have a play around with that. Yeah, I don't know. Good luck.